we're back. I'm Joe, he's Nick, and we are both in the studio staring at one another. I'm waiting for you to throw in the in the broadcast center. Oh, okay. Coming Tag to line. you live from the Think Radio Broadcast Center in Canada's nation's capital. We are the flagship of conservative talk in this country. We sure are. We're not the only ones, but I think we are the most daring, the most you know, the flagship. We're the flagship. We the best. We're the best. The question the is, are who's the admiral, you or me? Um, Let's be co-admiral. You know, I, I don't know whether I'd want to be captain of the ship or admiral of the fleet. I don't know. You know, if you're, yeah, if, you know, I think that if you're if you're the captain of the flagship. Um, uh, yeah, but you're not. That's not admiral. You, no, I understand that, but I. I, I just, I, I don't know that that... Okay, tell you what, Joseph, the same you are a Mars officer. I'll make you admiral. I don't know that I want to be the admiral. <laughs> Not these days, anyway. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, oh, we won't get into that tonight. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's actually the whole idea of, you know, sexual harassment in the military uh, and, uh, and, you know, people coming forth and saying, you know, somebody said something mean to me or whatever. I, oh, man, somebody said... Your superior said something mean to you in oh, the military. No. Okay, and that's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Give I, them the red card. Yeah, they they don't uh, they they you know they don't go out of their way to do it. But there is an element, you know, on, on this. This is kind of peripherally related to the topic that we want to talk about. So we let's go down this rabbit hole for a second, Nick. Um, when you're when you're in training, particularly when you're in basic training. There is actually a value to your superiors really being mean and bullying you. Oh, yeah. Because it, it breaks you down a little bit. It toughens you up. Uh, and you learn to deal with uh, um, uh, stress, negative uh, psychological pressure. Right. Uh, you know, this whole idea that you're going to train and operate a military, that somehow or other you're going to be able to do that, and at the same time uh, shield them from stress. I don't know. I, that just doesn't add up to me. I know. And and you don't like, you know, some of the silliness that goes on in terms of harassment and bullying and stuff like that. And and there are rules against some of this stuff, okay? Like superior officers should not uh, fraternize with lower ranks of the opposite sex. There's a very good or reason even, for that. Or even, or even um, uh, uh, within their own mass. The same sex. Yeah, that's right. So there's there's an element of that. But the reason that, you know, I thought that this sort of peripherally ties into what we were talking about is because now apparently the Ottawa School Board, the Ottawa Carlton District School Board, is debating whether or not to eliminate a program where they have officers, police officers, assigned to certain schools. And uh, and, and the part of the reason for having police officers assigned to certain schools, it's not so much a safety thing, although there's an element of, of protecting students from uh, potential attacks, sure. Uh, but there's also the building a rapport and a relationship and getting to know, as we used to say when I was going to school, the police are your friends. Uh, and uh, and how? what better way is there to instill a certain amount of trust um, and appreciation for the police in youngsters, in students, in youth, not just youngsters, uh, than having them have some kind of a relationship with uh, a, a police officer or, or a small number of police officers if they do, you know, rotate in and out of the school. So I think that the program has some merit. But I understand the the argument about taking them out. I understand the argument. I disagree with the argument. Because the argument basically is, well, police, they're, they're police, they're not trusted, they're going to, you know, students feel traumatized, they feel pressured, they feel stressed, they feel all of these things. And I'm not denying that they feel these things because of a police presence. Maybe they do. But it seems to me that the right response in this case uh, is, is not to um, eliminate the program, it's to teach the children, to teach the youth, to deal, A, to deal with the stress, rather than taking the, the, the what is a pretty, you have to admit, a pretty innocuous uh, stressor, um, uh, rather than just eliminating the source of stress, 
how about teaching students to uh, to deal with that stress and to cope with it? Because it's really not that big a deal. And I know people are going to say, well, oh, how do you know? It's, it, of course it's a big deal. I'm going, yeah, it's a big deal because you're making it a big deal. Right. Okay, you're telling the students that it's a big deal. You're You're going out to the media and you're talking about how big a deal it is. That's where the kids learn this from, okay? So downplay it a little bit. You know, there's no police harassing people in these schools. The thing that drives me crazy about this, Joseph, is this is, because um, it's all based on race. If I remember, because you were telling me the story earlier, uh, it, it comes from certain quarters uh, where race and uh, background are what's driving this. Certain groups within schools feel more stress and more fearful of having a police officer walking the halls or being in a community police officer's office in the school where he can interact with the kids or she can interact with the kids. And uh, they feel that that particular community uh, in the, you know, that they feel the stress. Well, okay, maybe what you should stop doing is making it a racial thing. Stop segregating psychologically kids by race. Don't worry about where they come from. Don't worry about, you know, anything except the fact that they're kids. They're just kids. And that's the way you should approach it. They're kids. Who cares where they come from? Who cares what they... And you know who's propelling this is the people who live off victimology, where they make a very healthy living, making sure that the problem they're trying to solve never gets solved. You see it in, the in um, let's say, in downtown Ottawa, when we had, the, remember, the controversy around the uh, shooting gallery, the uh, safe injection site, Okay. Uh, there was a whole bunch of people thought it was a really dumb idea, me included. And I I said at the time when it was coming out, it's very much like having one of these places, is like having a bar that knows there's an alcoholic walking through the door, but rather than refusing to serve him because of the problems he faces when he drinks, they just make sure he has a clean glass, okay? People who do that are simply living off the suffering of somebody else. And this is the same thing. The people who promote this idea have a vested interest in seeing the problem perceived as serious. Otherwise, how do they justify their existence? Well, your, your, your approach to this and your observations are probably somewhat more cynical than mine would be. Me? I'm, I'm cynical? Prepared, I'm prepared to give these guys the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to accuse them of uh, purposely perpetuating the problem. Because Do you know this why I'm this way, money. though, Joseph? Pardon? Because I, I, the reason I have this attitude is because of experience. I've seen this in my 20 years in broadcasting over and over and over again. And it's always the same kind of people. It's always the same kind of organizations. And it's always the same kinds of solutions. And after a while, you do get jaded. You, you, I've heard this song played in a different symphony. Right. Okay, it's the same thing. Yeah. So when I look at this, the similarities are just too stark to ignore. Well, Because I'd love to give them the benefit of the doubt. I just don't think they've earned well, it. Well, I'm going I'm to give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, you do that if you want okay, to. I'm not prepared to. I understand. But what I am saying is, whether you're doing it on purpose or not, you are perpetuating the problem by continuing to make the issue race um and if that's a problem fine we we could talk about dealing with it but the 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 people who are talking about race all the time who are shoving individual human beings into categories based on the color of their skin or their country of origin are are not conservatives they're not people on the right of the political spectrum they're the good the do-gooders on the left who have to find a way to uh, to to put people into a category in order that they could deal with them within whatever their system and their framework of, of approaching the problem is. So in other words, okay, uh, we talk about racialized communities, which is a you know a relatively new term, right? What's a racialized community? There's well, a lot of new terms out there we didn't okay. use to use. So you're a racialized community. 
okay, well, what does that mean? Does that mean that I'm First Nations? Fine, I'm First Nations. I'm 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 Indigenous. I'm uh, although you know I was born in Canada, so that makes me Indigenous to Canada too. But I I understand the semantics of it. Um, uh, I'm not an Aboriginal. Well, we'll get into that at some other time. But the the the, it, the fact that we talk about it and we continue to make it an issue and we continue to see things through that prism, okay, that in fact is the racialization. Uh, and so at some point in time, if you want to get beyond race, you have to stop dealing with things on a racial level. So in other words, let's take the police, for instance, okay? If if poli- if you've got a bad cop, whether he's a, a, a ra- he or she is a racist or a sexist or misogynist or, you know, whatever, they, they're violent, etc., but the crime, this this guy, you know, the, the you, whatever, was it George Floyd or whatever the guy's name was in the oh, States? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, the problem... I know who you mean. The problem, the problem is not that that cop overreacted Reacted. to a black man. The problem is that he overreacted, period. And it and and you cannot always make it about race. You have to talk about the actions of the person, not the motivation of the person. Because if you're going to continue to try to 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 parse the words, try to you know peel the onion back, onion skin back, uh, etc. You know, there's no end to that, and you never escape the discussion about race. So, if you're if you're talking about this stuff, you, you really should be colorblind. I don't care about the color of the victim or the color of the perpetrator. I care about the action of the perpetrator. Period. Full stop. I'm not personally, I don't want to get into a whole discussion or, or, or an analysis of the person's mindset. You know, this guy shoots people, uh, goes from a, to a couple of, of these spas in Atlanta, shoots a handful of people, all right? Uh, and now the only thing we're talking about is the fact that the people who were victims, and I don't even know that it was all of the victims, happened to be Asian American. So now we're talking, next thing I know, I'm hearing that uh, here in Canada, the, you know, senior police officers are, are running around uh, doing outreach meetings to, to uh, Asian uh, leaders in Asian Canadian communities uh, to reassure them that you know uh, we we're not bigoted, okay. Well, I, I nobody was accusing you of being bigoted, okay. But is this really a racial thing? You know, the value of these people and the crime here is that you snuffed out the lives of human beings. The value of these people is in their humanity, not in the color of their skin, or their point of origin, or their language. They're human beings. And we have to stop commoditizing them. We have to stop finding ways to, to, to fit them into some category and put them into some on some shelf somewhere. Um, uh, unless we do that, you know, I'm, I'm ranting here. But unless we do that, we're, we're never going to get out of this. Well, right Morgan right. Freeman had the best answer when um, Bruce Willis, no, Wallace, what's his first Will, name? Bruce Willis? Yeah, no. The Mr. actor, Wall- no, the news anchor, Wallace. Pam- Was it Tom? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Mr. Wallace worked for ABC or one of the lettered companies down there and was interviewing Morgan Freeman about Black History Month. And he said, why is race still an issue? You know, uh, what do you think we should do about racism in, in the United States? He said, simple, stop talking about it. Stop making it an issue. I'm right. black, you're white, that's, you know, do we need a white history month? And he said, well, I'm Jewish. I said, okay, do we need a Jewish history month? No. We have American history. And it's made up by...